Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing Firefly Forest. We have Keenan here who's working the cameras. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We will be doing this project in seven steps. Sounds like a lot, but stay with me. Okay. Our very first step is we are actually going to be doing a light sketch of our landscape and putting in some masking fluid dots for our flyer fireflies. Ooh. Our second step, we'll be doing a wash that will go from like yellow to this gorgeous purpley color. Our third step is after that dries, we will be doing more dots with our masking fluid so we can get two different colors, white and yellow. And then our fourth step after the masking fluid dries is we will be doing another wash here and then start to put in our trees. Okay. What? But just our far ground trees. And then our fifth step, we will be doing our mid-ground trees. Our, let me look where I'm at. Sixth step, we will be doing the foreground, which is what's right in front of us. So these bushes and this big tree. And then our very last step is we'll be rubbing off the masking fluid to look at all these beautiful fireflies. Super cool masking tape, glue, <laughs> gum chip, prick. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, no, the first try. Okay, as you can see, my palette is already dirty, and that's because I want to show you that watercolor reconstitutes. Oh, magical. Yeah, so like if you have a palette like this, you can keep using it and not waste paint. I'm really glad I didn't clean your palette earlier. Me too. Because I thought about it. <laughs> you got to clean that for me. <laughs> so our very first color is black. Our second color is Tahoe blue. Our third color is violet. And our very last color is dandelion yellow. And this, the fun thing about this dandelion yellow is sometimes it has like, it's like a cooler yellow, which means like as it dries, it sometimes turns like a little greenish. Mm. And I feel like fireflies are actually that color. Oh, they are. Yeah. So I thought that that was like a really fun thing. But I will say that like if you have a warmer yellow, that could look beautiful too. But that could also look like, like a campfire. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So I'm excited about that. Um, the paint we're using is our in-house paint brand, Dandelion Paint Co. We are using two brushes around six and around two. We will be filling the entire page, so if you have a larger brush, please use it. I try not to complicate things with way too many supplies, so if you have around two and a six, that's all you need. That's what I used to paint this, but it is faster and easier if you have a larger brush. Like around 10 would be great, or even a wash. Maybe I'll grab a wash to show you guys how to use that while we're painting. The other supplies that we will be using is I'm using this Pabio masking fluid pen or drawing gum pen. There's so many different names and I don't know why. Give it a new name. They all do the same thing. What's this guy's name? We're gonna call it MP. MP? MP. Okay, grab your MP. I also use my favorite magical tape to tape down my paper. This is the Holbein soft tape. Um, and I have this handy dandy MP eraser. Ooh, nice. Okay. Because <laughs> I also don't know the name of this eraser, but it is meant to rub off masking fluid. <laughs> okay. We got to do our oath. Because I forgot it in one of the other tutorials, and I'm so sorry about that. I stretched too fast. You okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay, if you can repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. I'm low energy today. <laughs> I can't feel. <laughs> okay. That bell always has the same energy, so we'll just rely on it. We'll just rely on the bell to carry the energy today. Yes. That works great. Can you just start dinging that when I start you to slow me? down? I will do it right now. <laughs> when you feel like I'm starting to like do this, just start. Wailing on that bale. Okay. Let's get into this. Someone's going to hate that because <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one tutorial, we actually had a foghorn in it, so it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. There's no way. Okay, so we're going to start with step one, which is doing our sketch. Now, for people who aren't familiar with drawing, this might be super intimidating to you. First of all, I just want to say, don't think of it as drawing. Think of it as just making marks on a paper. The second thing to think about is the shapes that we're making are like lines. That's mm. it. 
that's it. And the beautiful thing when you're doing nature is that nature is funky. Like you are gonna see some funky looking trees. You're gonna see some like weird shapes. They're not all the same. They're not all perfect. There's so much variation in nature. So somewhere, whatever your tree looks like, somewhere in out there, whether past, past, present, or future, there is a tree that looks like that, you know? 100% that's true. So just embrace it. I've read that before. <laughs> Me too. I watched you write it down. The Book of Sarah. The, the Book of Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just grabbed a pencil. If you want to use watercolor pencils, that's really great. Watercolor pencils will blend out as you add water to them. Um, so that's good. Sometimes that's bad though, if you're doing like an all over wash as your first step. And then your second step is to paint inside the marks because mm -hmm. then your marks are gone. So I'm using a pencil. And I'm gonna start with just doing my bushes. So the bushes are going to be on the bottom third of my paper. And like bushes are just kind of like round, weird shapes. It's gonna go down and it's gonna go back up. That's it. Those are your bushes. Bushes done. Bushes done. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to do this tree. I did not have the tree directly in the middle. I had it off to the left hand side. And I'm gonna start by going up. It's gonna go all the way to the top of my paper. And it's gonna be about an inch thick. And as it gets to the top, you're gonna slightly narrow it in. Don't like crazy narrow it in. Like there's a slight, so if you were, if I'm using my pencil to measure how thick the base of my tree is, mm. there's that and then that's where it is on the top. Do you see that? Can yes. you? I, th I believe so, yes. yes. So there's a, it's slightly smaller. Hey, that's a good gauge. What? The tip of your pencil. Oh, I use pencils to measure stuff all of the time, especially if I'm like doing it in person, like drawing something or painting something in person, you can actually measure the distance between things as Ooh. you're going and like how long and the angle of things. Really helpful. Okay, so just have that go up. If it gets a little wavy or wonky, that's how trees are, but you can always like go back over it. So there's my foreground. Now I'm gonna put in my midground. So that's gonna be these trees that are slightly darker. So one, two, three, four. So kind of right next to this one, I got tree. I think this was actually tree three, but I'm starting with it. Okay. And then we got another tree over here. And I'm not putting the branches in yet. That's on purpose. And then I have one off to the side here where you can't see it like super well. It's like halfway in the picture. And then I have one over here. Okay. And now we're gonna put in our far ground trees. These are the trees that are farthest away from us. Now, whenever you're trying to communicate depth and space, you need to do two things. One, you need to utilize atmospheric perspective. That means as things get farther away, they get lighter in value. So if we're looking at our trees here, your foreground tree should be the darkest value, your midground tree should be a mid value, and your far ground tree should be a light value. Do you see the value differences? Mm, almost there. <laughs> what? You always say almost there color. Oh yes. Thank you for reminding me my own teaching. You're welcome. <laughs> The other thing to communicate is things get smaller when they're farther away. So your foreground tree should be your biggest tree. Your midground tree is gonna be your medium sized tree. Your far ground trees are gonna be smaller, uh, as in thinner, okay? Like the bears. So like, yes. So your far ground and mid ground trees, there, there doesn't have to be a huge difference in thickness because of course there's variation in nature and blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? But like, it just helps um, position things in space, how you can tell something is far away or close. Rely on value and rely on proportion. Okay. Got it. So far ground trees. Here's a thin little guy. This is an excellent lesson for so many different things. I know. Well, I'm just a really good life. teacher. <laughs> I can't even do a straight line because I'm laughing so hard. 
I never let that bother me because I'm going to paint over this anyway. So like, even if these trees look funky right now in my sketch, the whole point of a sketch is not to get it perfectly. It's basically to do a, a, a layout, but a general layout. So it doesn't need to be fully detailed. We don't have to put everything in there. This is just so I know that when I'm ready to move on to the next step, I know what to paint. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. Because if it was the end of the world, and if this was the end of our project, we'd be like, what the heck? <laughs> There's always a messy middle. Okay, so before I get to painting, I need to mask off where I want there to be some white spots for my fireflies. So starting here in the middle, between the bushes, I'm gonna start doing dots. And you can just do polka dots or you can make them bigger. I have done both. And then I want it to feel like these fireflies are going up and out, like there are these swarms going in through the trees and it's like this really magical moment. Wispy. So like, let these go up. And then like, I'm kind of doing it in between the trees over here. These are gonna be smaller because I want them to feel further away. And then you can even, if you want, you can have them go in front of the trees um, or like around. So here are some coming up. Just remember that whatever area you mask off with your MP, um, it will stay white. I also did some in the bushes here because I thought that that would leave some like nice light in with some of these bushes. Okay, that feels pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna actually do a couple more up here. I'm, I mean like, I'm a huge fan of like making things feel a little bit like whimsical and magic. So I go a little bit crazy on my dots. Worth it. Totally worth it. Now we want to make sure this is dry before we do our wash. So we're going to get our wash ready while this dries. Now, two things I want to call attention to before we start painting, which is we're using two colors here that are actually complementary colors, purple and yellow which is great when they're in the same painting together because they work off of each other, but makes it kind of scary when you're doing a wash because it's really easy to mix brown. That's not bad, and you are gonna get some muddy areas in your painting. And if you look at mine, kind of where this yellow meets the purple, it's a little bit muddy. Do you see how there's like mm -hmm. brown right there? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a hint. That's gonna be normal, and that's okay. Don't stress about that. What I want you to be aware of is your, your tendency is going to be to pick up blue instead of purple because blue and yellow actually mix together. But the color that they mix together is green, which again isn't bad because you can turn this entire thing into like more of a green coloring and like dark greens and have it be a little bit more realistic. I wanted to go for something like twilighty and like super whimsy. So I went with like this really pretty purpley color, but I just want to, like warn you, if you're not planning on doing a green scene and you want to do this coloring, you, you are going to want to try and grab blue to mix. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because that's going to like, well, you're the artist. You can do whatever you want. But like, I'm not going to. Okay? So I'm going to grab yellow. And starting from the center, this is where I want my yellow to be the strongest. I'm going to put that in and then just use water to blend out. And I'm gonna try and work quickly here. I'm not gonna be too um, worried about how this turns out. I'm just, this is our first layer. Now you'll also notice that I am like overlapping on my bushes a little bit. That's on purpose. Because I'm gonna be putting like a super dark value over. So like, it's okay if I overlap because I'm gonna paint over it with the dark value anyway and cover it up. 
Now when I'm getting to the top here, this is where I want a barely there yellow color because this is where we're gonna start to transition to purple. If you do too much yellow on the top, when you add purple to it, that's where it's gonna get muddy. So when you're like, we want like a hint of yellow here, but then we want it to get to like a barely yellow. Does that make sense? Yes. I've heard of the barely there color. <laughs> That is so funny that I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, oh, what is What's the barely, barely there? there tree? Who came up with that? <laughs> she sounds really smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to do a hint over here. So really, really rely on your paint color. I mean, your <laughs> don't do what I just said. Really, really rely on your water as if it's a paint color right now. Uh. And if this is your very first project painting and you have absolutely no experience with watercolor before and you're completely lost and confused of what I've even been talking about, we have a wonderful beginner series which will give you all of the information you need to feel more confident attempting this project. So if this is your first one and you want to press pause to this and go watch that, I highly recommend it. Okay. There's going to be some changes between this and those. <laughs> Video different wise. surroundings, different yes. coloring. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to introduce uh, purple. So I'm going to grab my violet and I'm using mostly just violet at this point. You can do a tiny, tiny bit of blue, but the reason why I want to use mostly violet is because this violet tends to lend itself to pink when it's a lighter wash and I really want that pink feel here. You see how it like has that rosy feel yes I also like that so I'm gonna use mostly violet because when or like pretty much just violet and water because when you mix water with this violet it has a pinky feel and I'm just gonna be painting over my trees so like don't stress about painting around your trees like don't do that to yourself but you want to make sure that this is a really light wash because if this wash is too dark and we try and paint our trees on top of it, like you won't see it, it won't show up. Does that make sense? Yes. And this is where I'm saying like having a larger brush is handy. Like you can see I'm doing this with my six. It's just taking longer than it needs to. If you had a larger brush, you can fill this area faster. Gosh, look at that gorgeous color though. Are you mm. kidding? Hello. Okay, and then when I get down to my yellow, you can see that I'm just really pulling water and like barely, like, so it's gonna be like strong yellow, barely their color, and then it gets to stronger purple, pink. You see that? Yes, it's a very beautiful transition. Thank you. And if I get like a little bit of blooms, that's okay. We're gonna be painting over stuff. Blooms always add a little bit of interest, I think. I'm a huge fan of them. Now, let's say you get here and you're like, gosh, this purple is so dark, but I'm like really close to my yellow. What do I do? Take your paper towel or your cloth and just lift. <sighs> lift up some of that purple. And blend out. See? Hmm. See and that gives it a cool little texture too. Yeah, it does. And then like maybe when you get to like the top part, like the very top, if you want, if you're just like, oh, I gotta use that blue. I'm staring at it. It's calling my name. Do a little blue purple, but just at like the top and the sides. Because we're going to use that like blue purple color to do our trees, our far ground trees, and we don't want um, our trees to totally get lost. Lost in the woods. <laughs> yes. And remember, you can always like the wonderful. How do I say this? I view it as wonderful. Some people do not, but let me explain to you why I view it as wonderful. Is like, your painting informs you as you go. And with watercolor specifically, and this is, I mean, this is true for oil and acrylic, your painting changes as it dries. Um, so like, 
you might start to get some texture lines. You might start to get some blooms, like maybe the color separated in a way that you weren't anticipating. For me, that's always a moment of excitement because it's like a discovery. And I really love and appreciate that. Um, so my advice is to like, when you have those moments of discovery, allow yourself to appreciate them, but also know that you have the right to change them. So like for me, like, I actually think this hard line right here is super beautiful. Like, I didn't mean to do that. That's how it came out. I really like it. I'm not gonna cover it up. But if you don't like it, if you feel like it's actually taking away from your painting, then you have every right to go back and kind of blend it out or do another wash over it. I also really love that hint of blue right there. Do you see that? Yeah, right at the Beautiful. top. Beautiful. I'm gonna add more. Okay. I just really like how that looked. Oh, it's so like magical feeling, isn't it? Makes me think of there's a there's an old movie and they're cutting down the trees and there's something trapped in an old old tree, but they're like fairies that fly around. What is that called? Ferngully. Thank you. You're welcome. Makes me think of that. Okay, I can see that. I love Ferngull Ferngully. <laughs> that's it that was the, that's the theme that song that was the theme yeah <laughs> fern gully <laughs> <laughs> I got a little too dark there so I'm just blotting I'm sorry that I just threw out the red robin theme song for an old movie <laughs> it just happens so. I am not sorry <laughs> And if you're like, but Sarah, the wash is so much darker on this painting than what we're doing right now. Well, that's because we're only on step two, silly. Mm. We're gonna be doing more layers. Hold your horses. We'll get there, you know? Trust the process. Yes. Oh, I just realized I'm like, I thought I was painting in between the trees. I was actually painting on the tree, which again, isn't bad, but. I'm just gonna cover that beautiful color I just laid down up, so I'm gonna. And I kind of wanted like a vignette feel. Vignette means it like has darker values on the edges to feel like it's like, I don't know if spotlight is the right word, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like works. the focus, yeah. it like gradually goes to full where on the edges are just a little bit darker value. So I'm actually gonna be doing a little bit more blue on the sides and top of my painting to get that kind of vignette, vignette feel. Oh my gosh, is it vignette? Um, I've only ever heard it pronounced vignette. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. But Maybe I'm thinking of beignet. Ben what am I thinking of? Ben Gay? <laughs> no, it's a donut. Oh. But. They're from Louisiana. Bear claws. No. They're French. <laughs> they're like. Bouquet. No, they're like donut holes. It's going to come to me. You guys, you guys are yelling at me right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I'm only giving, giving you wrong answers. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying and I'm like wrong. Okay. We got to let this dry. While we're letting the purple dry, we can actually do step three, which is doing more dots. Now, the reason why we're doing more dots is because we're gonna get two different colors of dots. So, and I'm gonna replace dots with fireflies now. Some fireflies are going to be white because we masked off white paper, okay? Now, if we do some masking, we will mask off and keep the color that is underneath this. Which is incredible which is so cool, it's super fun. So I'm gonna have some yellow fireflies in here. Now, another thing that I wanna say is like, let's say you're like, I did so many white dots that I don't really have room to do yellow fireflies, which is kind of what I'm looking at right now. Um, if that's the case, don't stress, because if it's white, when you rub it off, you can just put yellow in back into it. 
Oh. So it's really not a huge deal. It just saves you an extra step if you mask it off now. Um, and you can also use this technique of masking off different to do like um, layers and paint. There's so many things. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm trying to stay focused. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm just doing some. And if you want to do some of like the purple, like, you know, keeping some of these a lighter value, go for it. You're the artist here. Worst thing that can happen is this winds up in the trash. You got to start over. And that doesn't seem so bad. No. Good practice run. Okay. So we're gonna let that dry. See how they turn green because the MP is blue mm -hmm. on the yellow. It's <laughs> cool. Hmm. Which is the color you said that uh, fireflies actually are. Yeah. What if there were blue fireflies? We gotta wait for this to dry, so it's okay if I talk right now. Mm -hmm. But um, the other night, the fireflies are out in season right now in Missouri, and we have like this pasture, or, like field behind our house. And one night, um, we just went outside, and it was just like all of these blinking lights across our field. It was so beautiful. Like we just sat and watched it for a bit. Cause, well, I'm from California, so we're not used to fireflies. They're really magical. <laughs> so like, they are magical. They still are Even magical. If you grew up here, if you yes. grew up here, because it's like, well, where'd they go? Every winter they're just asleep. Yeah. And you come back to summer, spring, you're like, oh my goodness. And it's just like glittering. I think it's the combo because you have the stars, you have mm -hmm. the smell of summer, you have the fireflies, you have the crickets. You have toads sometimes. It's just a, yeah. it's like a symphony of nature. Yes. And those things, they light up the ground and it's so pretty. One of my favorite memories ever in existence, like one of the most beautiful things I've ever witnessed. And it's so funny how when you're in the moment, you're like, this is so amazing. And then when you try and say it later, it doesn't sound that great. Yes. But there was an electrical storm here, which means just lightning. And it was last summer. I think it was last summer. It was a lightning like crazy, lightning like crazy. And because it was lightning like, like crazy, that was setting the fireflies off because they react to light. That's their like mating. Interesting. I think. It is now. <laughs> it is now in the book of Sarah. So anyways, they were just going crazy. So we were looking across our street in this huge field. There's lightning everywhere. It starts to rain. The fireflies are going. There's so many fireflies. Michael was outside playing his guitar and he was just like, he wasn't singing. It was just like musical. He's, my husband's a very talented guitar player. So he's just playing this gorgeous song that he wrote while like you see these glittering lights across the thing and you feel the moisture from the rain and you see all the lightning and it was dark, but the sky was lighting up purple whenever the lightning hit. And it was so beautiful. Just one of my favorite moments of all time. Wow. Oh, I loved it. Okay. Mm. And that's what I was thinking of when I made this project. All right. So we're going to move on to doing our second wash and starting to put in our far ground trees. So if you feel like there is a area that's a little bit lighter, for example, like I feel pretty good about the darkness of my wash on the edges, but I'm gonna do another layer of wash before I put in my trees. So I'm just gonna grab more purple, and if you wanna do a little bit of blue, you can. Um, I'm just gonna start bringing those in. And you can see that my paper is starting to buckle a little bit from the water washes and paint use, that is normal. Watercolor paper buckles. I know that some people stretch their paper before. Um, I have found that even when I do stretch my paper, it still buckles. So maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I don't know. But I've just decided that it's easier for me just to like tape it down and paint while it's taped down. So there is a little bit of buckling, but not so much that I can't paint over it. I have a hard time stretching paper. I I rarely stretch myself. <laughs> so if I have to stretch paper before I I never I stretch myself. <laughs> uh, Keenan, that was funny. Oh, thank you. I'll be here most of the day. <laughs> Until you're not anymore. Right. 
Oh my god. Why was that so dark? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh gosh. I'm so happy. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of like blend to my yellow now. Now this is where your purple can kind of overlap with this yellow. We kind of want like, I want to mess up the yellow a little bit just so I can get different variations mm. in my masking. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if I don't paint over this, then the areas that I just masked off to keep that bright yellow, like it didn't do anything. It would just be It would be the yellow. same as if yeah. I didn't do dots on it. So. Make sure everything's dry. I'm gonna grab just a tiny, tiny bit of purple. I am so glad you said something about that because I was gonna ask about that. Yeah, I'm just gonna like, like you can see it made it a little bit muddy. Yeah. That's okay. Don't go too crazy with the mud, but embrace a little bit of the mud because then we can just get different yellows. And again, these are the colors that we're working with right now, but if you feel like you want to just do like maybe an orangey yellow mm. instead right now, instead of like a purple, that would work great. Like you can do different colors than what I'm doing right now. I just wanna make sure that we kind of mess it up a little bit. Cause one, I feel like that makes it feel a little bit more in, in this scene instead of like on top, you know what I mean? I want it to feel as one. Um, and there was a second reason, but I forgot it. Cause I said one, but I didn't, I don't have a two. Mm. Well. Don't worry about it. That one was good enough to have be one and two. Perfect. Now, if I do keep an area super, super yellow, it would probably be like the very center here. So if you don't want to touch like the middle, that's fine. I'm going to try and keep that one a little bit more pure yellow. Just for fun. <laughs> like why not? Yeah. You know? Oh, snap. What? You could have the bushes be tents. <gasps> and then you could have... Oops. This be the campfire. That'd be the campfire. And maybe even do like a really dark silhouette. Yeah. That would work out great, Keenan. Well, now I know what project I'm doing in the future. Ooh, ooh. Wait, what? Which one? I'm going to do that. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, not right now, but like, that's Today? a great... No. <laughs> Whenever... Like tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My kids do that. They're like, oh, that's a good idea. Are we going to do that now? <laughs> Your kids do that? Yes. That is so funny. No. Oh, They're calling tonight? you out. Yeah, like, oh, tonight? You're no, like, that sounds tonight. really fun. They're like, yeah, it does. Let's do it. And yeah. you're like, ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that's looking good. I'm gonna lift up some of this color just over here a little bit. That yellow is bright. Right? I love a good vibrant color. I might have gotten a little aggressive with that yellow with my first layer, but <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Yopo. <laughs> you only paint once? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh, we're just here for each other. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. <laughs> Am I even supposed to be teaching right now? <laughs> water break. Coffee break. I got water. Both. We gotta wait for this to dry. Cool. What? Is that your break? That's my break. <laughs> we come back to tell them we we're came taking back. a break. I stopped and I came back to tell you guys that we we're taking a break. Stop painting. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't have any snacks here. Kanan, I have something to admit to you. Okay. We always talk about how you, like, we bring snacks, but we can't, like, eat them because we're might and, like, opening stuff and all of that. Yeah. And sometimes I get jealous that you get to eat snacks uh -huh. while I'm painting because yeah. you just do it quietly where I can't get away with that. Correct. Some really wonderful person sent us a basket that had a lid and a bunch of chocolate to put inside the basket so then we didn't have to individually unwrap. Oh my God. Every, they were mini Reese's. You said and it was, they were. I have, I um, ate those. Oh <laughs> my goodness. And I didn't give them to you. Sarah. <laughs> I feel betrayed. It works beautifully. But I've been using it in my office for during meetings when I need a snack. Wow. I just use my quiet basket with the quiet chocolate and I just snack. <laughs> Where did you get quiet chocolate? Well, because it's not unwrapped. They're, they're, so it's like a bag of unwrapped mini Reese's. So you put, you empty wow. the unwrapped, the, mm -hmm. the mini Reese's into the basket. Yeah. So then I can snack on chocolate all day long during meetings. Nobody knows because I'm not being loud. Well, now they know. I just, I've been whole, it's been months. Wow. <laughs> so you have this basket in your office right now? Yes. Unbelievable. In the drawer next to my desk. And every day I open it, I'm filled with like Listen, this guilt. hurts more because years ago, I was the snack guy for you where I would go buy supplies. I know. To have stashed. I know. I, I think it was for you. The right. snacks were for me? I think so. I think the snacks were why I've gained a significant amount of weight. <laughs> like that's when it started. <laughs> so I just took those. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I think it was addressed to me and you, wow. but I just never told you. I just ate them. <laughs> so sorry. I would say that's bold, but that's totally something that would normally happen. That's me. Wow. I will bring the basket Listen, down. I can't be mad about that. I'm not mad about it. I think... <laughs> I'm really sorry and I saved the tag because I need to think who sent that in that was so amazing of you yeah, that is amazing. I feel dishonest that I didn't actually relay the message to Keenan as well and now I am yeah the chocolate didn't make it well it, it but the basket <laughs> chocolate made it I think there's a little bit left in the basket and I'll bring it down well thank you Oh. I'm glad you came clean. That seems like a really heavy burden that you've been carrying. I've for been carrying it all literally day. months. Literally months. It's been weighing on my soul. Like every time I open my drawer to eat <laughs> the chocolate out of the basket, it's like this hint of like. Keenan would love this chocolate. <laughs> Tell Keenan <laughs> about this. Tell Keenan about this. And I'm just like eating. <laughs> eating and meeting. Okay. I think we're to a point that we can actually start painting our trees. Oh, wow. So. Hmm. What I'm going to do is I just want to mix a slightly darker value than the value that I have for my background because I want these trees to stand out. But remember, your painting informs you as you go and you have to match your values. What I mean by that is if these far ground trees are like black, that leaves you no room to do darker values for your foreground trees. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It would if I could trust you. <laughs> you can't trust me. Can't trust you with snakes. No, don't do it. <laughs> oh, 
I deserved that. I really <laughs> did. <laughs> Kanan Touche. Yes. Okay. So I'm mixing a little bit of my violet, a little bit of my blue, and a little bit of my black. And I'm going to start putting in my trees. So you can like test one mm -hmm. and see, and you're just like, okay, one, make sure it doesn't bleed because we want to keep these lines sharp. <clears throat> and if your background is still wet, these lines will bleed out. We don't want that. This value feels pretty good. It's showing up on my paper, but it isn't like drastic. You it's know what I mean? It's not taking over. Exactly. And then when I get down to the bottom here, I'm just going to actually add water till it blends out to nothing um, because I didn't really take the time to define the floor and I'm letting the fireflies do the work of kind of just covering up so we don't got to worry about it. We're nice. just not going to worry about that. So hmm. here's this color. And um, if you want to do branches now, actually, no, we're not going to do branches now. I'm just going to start with the trunks. So just try and keep in mind that your, your trunks just get slightly thicker as they go down or opposite. They start thick and then they narrow up. I'm gonna have another one over here. Now, the other fun thing about like not having an outline is um, your, you, this is gonna look different than what is here because we're not using an outline. We're like just, and even when we use an outline, they look very different. So like my trees might be slightly different than what's happening in this re reference photo and yours might be as well. So if you look at your painting separate from mine and say, actually my painting needs a tree here instead of here, do that. Do what is best for your painting because I can't see it. So trust yourself. And I know that that's scary, but it gets better. Okay, so here's my dark tree. Here's another, okay, here's another one. Oh, this is looking nice. Yeah. It's starting to, I love it when things start to emerge. Come together. Ooh, that's good. It would if I could trust you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that feels really good. And now we can put in our branches and I'm gonna to move to my round two just because it's thinner. I'm gonna pick up that same paint that I have mixed on my palette. And branches are the same um, way where they start thick and then they get thinner. So you're gonna start by pressing down to get a thicker line and then you'll lighten your pressure as you go and it will just thin out, okay? Nice tree. And remember with branches, there's always one, but like these are like aspen trees a little bit where the branches only like really come off of one. There might be like a little bit, but this isn't like normal trees where you have the main branch and then like a billion little tiny branches off of that. That's not these kinds of trees. So I'm trying to keep it really simple here with the branches because I don't want to overcomplicate it. Since we're on the topic of trees, totally gonna change the topic mm -hmm. from painting trees have you seen the trees around here that uh, they're, they're very tall massive trees and they're covered in white flowers right now <gasps> yes one they smell phenomenal do you know that they end up looking like dandelions what they just one of a tree next to my daughter's school uh -huh. puffed and shed all over the place and it was literally magical next what? to the school. What? Yeah. That sounds phenomenal. It was so cool. <sighs> Beautiful. <laughs> I love magic little moments like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did a couple branches here on there on my foreground trees. Remember, this is the farthest thing away from us. We can barely see this tree, so it's not going to be fully detailed. We're not going to see every all of it and it's like full glory. This is just it far away. So we see less of it, you know? So then that's why I only did like one or two branches here and there where like this uh, foreground tree, I get a little bit more detailed. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, now we're gonna do our um, 
fifth step, which is our mid-ground trees. So with this, I want to mix a darker value than these trees. And I want these ones to feel slightly more blue. So I'm going to have more Tahoe blue in my mixture, but I'm still going to have violet and black in there. Because I don't want to do like pure blue. That would feel really disjointed than what's going on in this painting. And these are my mid-ground trees. So here's one. And then check the value. I'm laying that down. That actually, that feels pretty darn good. Nice. And I'm just gonna like use my water, make sure this is a little bit thicker than what I've painted previously. Not crazy thicker, just like kind of. And then like I just made a whoops, see how thick that truck is, trunk is now? Because yeah. my brush. Well then I'll just thicken up the whole tree. Oh, okay, easy enough. Not a problem. I do stuff like that all the time. Kind of looks more round with it. Yeah. And then just get to water at the bottom here. Let it fade into nothing. You don't got to worry about what's going on down there, okay? That's my technical knowledge talking. And then, like, let's say you do this tree and you're like, actually, this tree is just as light as this one. Do another layer on top of it. You can always go darker. Maybe I'll do that just a hint. Just like one more swoop of color. But I'm saving my darkest value for my foreground, so don't, this is not your darkest value. Okay, and then there's one off the side here. And make sure it's dark so it, you can tell that it's a tree. So it's got to be darker than the little vignette that we put, but still not our darkest value. Ooh, that feels good. Okay, mm -hmm. I got a tree right here. And I'm just using my round six. I feel like it needs to get a little bit darker. So I'm doing another wash on it. And then this is where my big tree is gonna go. So I feel like I can either do another mid-ground tree on the edge here or right here, and I'm trying to decide what I wanna do. I'm just gonna do it on the edge because the what? fireflies are there. Okay, I was gonna ask what helps you decide. So yeah, because, well one, if I do it on the edge, I have the opportunity to do it here later. The reason why I don't want to do it here later is, or do it here, I don't think, is because when the fireflies are here and I don't want the fireflies over a tree. Two, this is going to be my foreground. This is like the biggest, sharpest thing. Because this is so dark, it's really heavy in the comp composition. Your eye goes to this tree. So if I have a really dark, heavy composition thing here, and then the next dark and heavy composition thing is to the right and to the left of it, that will bring all of the attention to that one spot. Does that make sense? Yes. You need to leave room for things to breathe. And by things, I mean like your eyes. Your eyes need to find places to rest within paintings. Hmm. And so like if I do, if I have a dark one here and a, ooh, fingerprint, a dark one here and a really dark one here and another dark one here, that's like gonna go whoa, and your eye is like really only gonna be able to see this spot. So I'm gonna go to the side of it to be safe. Cool. And also I have every right to change my mind later. Okay, and then we're gonna do branches. So I got my two. Just let it get thin. And it's okay if it overlaps into other trees.
The other thing I want you to be aware of as you are putting these branches in is be aware of um, the accidental implied lines that you can make. For example, if I do a branch here on this tree, and then here on this tree, and here on this tree, and here on this tree, and here, like if they're lined up horizontally, that's gonna create an implied line in your composition. So I'm trying to stagger it, so then like going horizontal, I'm not creating very strong disconnect areas. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I have a song to go along with that. So even though it might make sense for me to do a branch right here, like that's the first thing my mind told me to do, I have to go, nope, because that's going to line up with this one and this one. That can't happen, so I got to go down here. And what song did you have, Keenan? Sorry. You said accidental implied lines? Uh -huh. I thought of accidentally implied. <laughs> <laughs> That branch has to exist somewhere. It, it would be a really good walking stick. Yes. I'm going to do a little one over here. Give some depth to my side tree. Oh, gosh. You guys, this is looking great. Okay, now we're on our sixth step. We're almost done. You guys have done an amazing job sticking with us. And this is where we're going to do our darkest value. So, I'm going to grab my black. I'm going to grab my blue. I'm going to grab my purple and I'm going to really mix these colors together. I do want to have more black in this. So I just, I'm going to keep on adding it. But what I really love about my foreground bushes right here is how you see the, the blue comes through on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful color. Gorgeous. So I'm going to like make sure I have a good navy as well. So I'm going to mix black and blue right here and have this like really gorgeous navy color. Yeah, that's, that's it. This is the color I'm looking for. So very little purple actually. And we are going to do our tree. Now again, if you have a larger round, this is where I would use it. Or you could just do what I'm doing right now, which is just doing it in multiple strokes. I'm adding water to the color that I first put down. And then I will do another layer on top of that when it's nice and wet. Now, okay, I'm looking at this, and I love the value. I think the value is working beautifully. I feel like I narrowed too quick. This is too thick compared to the top. That could just be me. That's personal preference, mm -hmm. but I want to even it out a little bit more. Which means I'm gonna thicken up the middle and the top. Just making it wider. And then I, if you notice on this tree, the right side is actually a slightly lighter value than the left hand side. And I did the same thing here. So there's, yeah. it's a little bit lighter here and it's a little bit darker on the left hand. And that's just because even though we're not doing full realism here, I want to show that there's just a little bit of form and form is communicated through value. So you got to mess with the values a little bit. Then I'm going to take my two, round two, grab that same color and put in your branches. So have these be thicker than the branches that you put on your far and mid-ground trees, but it still thins off. And like, you'll see that I have my branches kind of like, like, you see how there's a space in there? Yeah. 
that's fine. Like, I do that all the time. Sometimes it's on purpose, sometimes it's on accident. When it happens, I let it be. Because trying to go back in and match this thickness so it feels like a line that's continuous is like really, really difficult. Nicole can actually do it with lettering, which is insane to me. Hmm. Um, but I just let it be. I was like, okay, you just don't see that section of branch. You know, like, big deal. Yeah, had a glare on it. Yeah. That branch is taking a break. That branch is like, just leave me alone. I don't want this part to be seen right now. <laughs> It was a hard winter. Okay, and this is feeling pretty good. I actually think I want this branch to stick out just a little bit more into the center. Um, so I'm going to just make it longer. And I want to keep messing with it, but my brain is saying, don't do that. Stop messing with it. Take a step back and look at it before you put more paint down. That feels pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna move to my bushes. So using that same navy black color that I have, I'm gonna put, paint my bush, bushes. Just make sure it's a really dark value. So what I like to do is I like to put down paint, then use water to spread it out, like so, and then when it's still nice and wet like this, to then drop in color. Because mm. then that dark value spreads. Um, I've also noticed that the values tend to stay darker when they are dropped into an already wet surface than if you were to just paint the dark value on it. I feel like it like, adheres to the paper differently, that it stays just a darker value in general. So this is feeling really purpley right now. Do you see that purple? I do. So I'm just going to go over it with black. And I do have some fireflies resisting these colors. That is okay. That's what I want to happen. paint over we don't want any white spaces so it's better to kind of like overlap now I will go back in with my two along the edge to create a different silhouette shape so this is just trying to get the general shape of my bushes in there see how I'm overlapping I'm not paying too close of attention to the edge because I know I'm going to paint over it again just working quickly I'm not following my own advice. <laughs> there we go. So when it's nice and wet like this, drop in color. So you're gonna get some gorgeous textures like that. Yes. Okay, and now what we're gonna do while this is wet I'm going to grab my two and kind of along the edge here, I'm going to be doing like different dots and marks, like kind of like funky. See how much more realistic this feels to the silhouette of a bush than this? Yep. But beware, your brain is going to want to make the same mark over and over again because our brain really loves patterns. And you can't be mad at our brain for that. It actually makes it super efficient. But like break that and be like, no, I will not. See, I'm even doing it right now. You gotta mess it up. <laughs> Before the, that one kind of looked like a cloud and then you gave it some uh, textures. Yeah. And the textures doesn't have to be only on the silhouette. Like see how I'm going into my bush too? Yeah. And that's because bushes themselves are three dimensional. There are, there's going to be like some areas that are closer to us and farther away from us because they're dimensional. They have form. So it's not like a flat piece of paper. Some, you can touch, touch the bush at different planes. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank you.
And also, if you're getting worried about like the shape of your bushes, nature is um, different. There's something, there's one out there that looks like it, you know? So that feels pretty good. How's it looking, Tina? It looks great. I was just thinking the bushes could actually be two people in ghillie suits. A ghillie suit is a, a foliage camouflage that you can oh, wear. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they found the holy grail of lightning bugs. Yeah, they did. Uh, I have a white spot here. You see that? I do. I don't want that. Okay. How did that get there? I just didn't paint it when I was like doing my bushes and my tree like it wow. just like missed and I'm like oh shoot that's a white spot there's actually one right here some of these are the fireflies some of them are not hmm. okay now I just want to give you guys permission to do something sometimes I get this far in a landscape where I've already put in my far for my far ground my mid-ground and my foreground. But sometimes when I do that and I'm done, I'm like, this still feels kind of empty. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad thing because one, we can look at it as this is a really great way to draw our viewer into depth and space because it could just keep on going. And this could also be seen as a really nice break for our eyes. Because there's a lot going on here and here and here and here. And like right in the middle, it's like, oh, I can, I can rest. I don't have to be staring at anything. This is where it's completely up to you. If you're looking at this and you're like, actually, I see what you're saying about the eyes and the rest, but it, it's really distracting me and I feel like it feels finished. I mean, unfinished. Then put, you can either do another wash or put another far ground tree. I would do it not perfectly in the middle. I would do it like slightly off center. But I just wanted to call out that, like, even though we did this in layers, you have every right to adjust it later. I just recommend stepping away from the painting for a little bit, making sure that's exactly what you want to do before you go into doing it. Okay? Got it. Okay, now we get to remove the masking fluid because we're all dry. So I'm going to use my eraser, MP eraser. And the areas that were masked off on top of the paint are just as easy to erase as the ones that were on painted on the white paper. Nice. You see that yellow? Yeah. So bright. I would be worried I wouldn't be able to find all the dots I made. Oh my gosh, that's a real thing. And actually, I bet you if you look in this reference photo, you can find some that I didn't rub off. Like that one, that one didn't rub off. So that, I mean like, that is totally possible. I do things like that all the time. But I, I, for me, I'm just like, well if I didn't notice it, somebody else probably isn't gonna notice it. So if I do notice it later, it's not the end of the world. And then if somebody's like, somebody else notices it before I do, they're like, did you mean to do that? And say, yes. 100% I did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can be like, oh shoot, no, thanks for letting me know. I would ask if I was allowed to say yes. Can I tell you I meant to put that there? <laughs> would you believe me? satisfying. Yeah, that looks satisfying to play with. So you see how I have the different yellows in there? That's so fun. I do love the fact that you, because I wouldn't, 
It's silly, but I wouldn't have thought that you could put the old MP on a color. Yep. You can do it on an already painted section. That's it's so totally okay. So cool. And you know what's funny is I've actually never tried that until I did this project. Wow. Yeah, and that's the, like, I love being able to teach you guys, but a lot of things that you want to learn, I also have to learn too to figure it out, which makes it like fun because I feel like I have grown so much just in the opportunity I have had to teach. Um, and I love learning new things and trying new things and exploring. Um, but also sometimes it makes me nervous because this is a new technique to me, you know, and somebody who has been doing this for years. So I'm just going to start using my eraser to rub off. Now be careful if your tree is still, can you hear me okay? Yeah, cool. If your tree is still wet, like don't try and use this eraser if your painting is still wet. Um, let it dry first. Actually, it seems like this is picking up the masking fluid a little bit better. I mean, the our MP pen a little bit better when I don't like peel it off. Oh, really? Maybe I've been doing it wrong. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to peel it off and I'm gonna see how that does. It's tricky trying to get all of them. Yeah, just spread out. But if you like miss one, it's not a big deal. Yeah, this is working just fine without it peeling off. I mean, like, I want to peel off the corner really bad, but maybe the whole point of it is it peels it off and then holds it. I got to do more research. Why would it hold it? Because look, it's staying stuck to it and it's not getting on my paper. Oh. Like it's holding on to the parts that are being rubbed off. It's grabbing them. You see that? Yeah. Like they're not getting all over my paper <laughs> as it as it fell off onto my <laughs> Okay. Now I'm gonna go around in my bushes start rubbing I kind of love the the washes I got in my bushes Me too. foliage I like that word better that's the technical term for washes for the bush I'm gonna call it foliage. foliage is foliage I feel like foliage just refers to like plant life is that correct, or am I making that up? Uh, Use uh, Steve. I'm gonna talk to Steve. Okay, now, our very, very, so we're still on our, this is the last part of our steps, and I wanna say, this is also the magic with masking fluid, and I talked about it earlier with Keenan. But like over here where my washes are so light, I masked off some white for my fireflies, but because the washes around it are so light, the white isn't popping off the page. But I still wanna bring attention to the fact that like there's fireflies over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab yellow with my round two, so my small brush, and you can add yellow fireflies in. And if you wanna paint on the white dots, you can. When I get to the purple, that's what I'm going to do. But on my yellow, I actually can just paint straight over it. You see that? See yes. how I did that? And I'm gonna do it on my tree. And I can even do it in here a little bit. Foliage. Foliage. Is already highlighted in Steve. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? It says, a mass of leaves 
As of a plant or forest. Okay. Flora, green, greenery, herbage, leafage, vegetation. So I said it right. You nailed it. And somebody knew that we would need that information. Yes. Okay, and I'm going to do some yellow in the um, in my foliage as well, and then over here too. Gosh, I just love I love how whimsy this painting is. You ready for the reveal? Yes. Our very last step: removing our tape. Now, I have noticed myself, so every painting I do, I tape it down completely. And if I want the painting to dry flat, I actually leave my paper taped to my surface for a good 24 to 48 hours before I remove the tape. Because even though this is technically like dry, the paper itself is still moist, which means that if I untape this right now, it is going to dry uh, curved which is normal for watercolor paper. To alleviate that, just leave this taped for a good while and it will be more flat when you untape it then. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. <sighs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to the clean lines party. How is this tape, how does this tape do it? <sighs> well, it trusts the paint. Yes. To not lie to it and take it snack. <laughs> the amount of washes and paint and water I put on this paper and still look at that clean edge. Yeah, serious. Like, amazing. Be slow, be soft, speak kind words to it. That is crazy. <sighs> Nary a bleed or hair. Even on that foliage. Oh, yes. Okay. This is our project. We are done. That was a long one. So celebrate. We did it. I can't wait to see how yours turned out. I can't wait for you to share it. I can't wait for you to, to use this new technique of laying masking fluids to get different colors. It's so fun. So if you are on Facebook, please join our Facebook community. It's for the sole purpose of you guys sharing your work, learning from each other. It is so scary to share your work. It is. It, it's, it's an act of vulnerability. It's very hard. But we wanted to create a place where you guys can do that freely without, you know, people judging you for it. Like we're literally asking you to do this. So please do it. And learn from each other. Ask questions. And that's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. That's it. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Bye.